Welcome back to the VMware vCenter Site Recovery Manager 5 video series. My name is Andrew Elwood. I'm a senior technical instructor with VMware Education Services. Working our way through the SRM uh, video series, we've now made it up to the storage replication part two. If you haven't already watched part one, um, it might be worth your time to go back and have a look at that because part two kind of picks up where that one left off. Uh, but the short version is this. We're halfway through configuring vSphere replication. Uh, and part two is going to go through deploying the vSphere replication server. Um, so on this slide, we're focusing on the VRS, which is on this particular instance, it's one of the green objects on the right-hand side in site two. This is the guy who receives the traffic that is the replicated information for each VM that's designated for replication as it flows inbound to the protected or to the recovery site. So on that note, uh, we're going to step away and perform a demonstration here which installs the VRM server on the recovery site. Uh, and once the VRM server is uh, deployed, we're then going to go ahead and pair that VRM server with the corresponding replication management server and register the VR appliances on the site on which they are deployed. Uh, this forms the link between the replication management servers and the replication server that does the heavy lifting. Uh, it is possible and entirely likely in larger environments that you will deploy more than one VRS, but you only need one vSphere replication management server. So on that note, let's get right into the demonstration. So as a continuation of the uh, vSphere replication installation, uh, here we're looking at a situation where we were prompted with a certificate because the VRMS servers have now registered. Uh, we then click on the link next to number three, which is configure VRMS connection. Uh, simply type in the credentials for, uh, or complete the credentials information to authenticate to the op opposing side's uh, vCenter server, and at that point, you're pretty much done. I mean, that's the configuring the VRMS connection is very, very simple. Now we need to deploy our VRS servers. So those, are the, those are the servers that do the heavy lifting with respect to the replication piece. So um, again, same principle as before, name it as it should show up in inventory however you choose, but my preference is to use fully qualified domain names because it makes it easy for me to associate the, uh, the VM entity with the actual uh, known name on the network. Uh, place it in what appropriate virtual machine file folder and resource pool is as appropriate as shown on these dialogues, so we'll put this one under the vSphere replication resource pool. Choose the appropriate data store. We're just putting it on local storage for now. Again, it's all as long as it's functional. Uh, the appropriate network connection. And then populate the default gateway, DNS, IP, and NetMask information as appropriate on your network. Again, I'll reiterate what I said during the last deployment, and that is you should have all of this information uh, already ready to go. Strong recommendation to make sure that your DNS server already has uh, good DNS names for this uh, vSphere replication server that you're about to deploy and for each subsequent one, uh, and make sure that they're referencing those uh, reserved IP addresses that you've actually chosen. Um, believe it or not, it will in fact work with DHCP, but I would only ever use DHCP for these servers if you were taking the time to make a static reservation in your DHCP scope for these servers. It's really important that we know where these guys are on a continuing basis. Um, Completing the dialogue with the subnet mask, summary screen to finish, and again we go through the usual deployment of the uh, OVF file so that it creates the resulting uh, virtual machine. And we've completed the deployment of the VRS successfully. So now that we've got our VR server actually deployed, uh, the last piece is to register the VR server with the appropriate management server. So in other words, to link the server that's going to do the heavy lifting with the management server in the environment. Now you can deploy multiple vSphere replication servers or the VR servers uh, and only a single VRM server. So simply click the link underneath step five there. Uh, we'll browse through the dialog box to find the actual VR server to register. In this case, this is the, uh, uh, the VRS. I'll just if we select the inappropriate one. So yes, no, that we selected the right one. No, so chose the wrong one and it actually tells you, says, hey, are you sure you want to do this? And in this particular instance, it said no. Now here we're looking at an interesting situation and this is something that comes up a lot. Um, we're just trying to be too fast. All the prompt is telling us is that, look, you're trying to register this server. It's gone out to talk to that server 
and the server itself hasn't completely restarted yet, therefore VMware Tools is not up and running. So in order to facilitate this demonstration, we'll simply jump over to site four where we've already deployed the VRS server some time ago. Uh, it's already had a good chance to start up. We select it, notice that the dialog runs smoothly, doesn't give you the warning about VMware Tools, and it then simply registers that one. So we registered the VR server with site four, and then we'll come back and complete the process for site three. Uh, and this is another clear indication that it's very nice to have that unified so our single pane of glass where we can in fact manage uh, both sides of an SRM environment from the same vSphere client. And again, walk through the dialog box, choose the VRS, choose to register it, and now we get the prompt. And we did not go out somehow magically behind the scenes and install VMware Tools. We simply gave the server enough time to start and to load VMware Tools and make it run. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the process. You can look at the summary tab, have a look at the results, and we are now completely listed with green checkboxes beside each of the inventory items that we're supposed to do to deploy vSphere replication in both sites. So now that we've deployed the VRM server on the recovery site and we've also paired and registered the VR appliances, uh, the next piece in the puzzle is to think about whether you'd want to do this on your site. Does vSphere replication make sense to you in your SRM environment? Uh, in this case, you can go to uh, www.vmware.com slash education, uh, search for the SRM5 install configure manage class and you can have all the hands-on work that's required in order to be able to deploy this in your environment.